Hello, everyone. My name is Matt Gallagher. I am the uh, VP of Global Sales for Inspy, and I would like to thank everybody for joining us today uh, to hear from Shari Seth at Lexmark as she talks about unleashing the power of process digitization on ServiceNow. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing this presentation. Hope everyone else here as well. Um, just a couple of housekeeping things um, as we go through. Uh, Shari will be taking some questions at the end of this presentation. And I encourage you to use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen in order to uh, in input some of the questions that you might have. And then as we, we get towards the end, uh, certainly we'll be, be helping to get those questions answered for you. Uh, but why don't we jump right in? Without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to Shari Seth from Lexmark, uh, and she will be walking you through this presentation today. Uh, Shari, it's all yours. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Thank you all for joining the session today. Um, thank you, Matt, for uh, introducing me. I am the EDT and analytics lead at the GBS organization, the global business services organization at Lexmark. And my teams are responsible to drive the process digitization initiative and the analytics and automation initiatives in the GBS organization. When I'm not doing any of that, um, I love spending time with my family my husband and my two teenage daughters. And yes, it's a tougher challenge than mastering EDT analytics and automation all combined, okay? So let's get started. I'm looking forward to sharing how we have leveraged Inspy integrated with ServiceNow to deliver the value and operational excellence to this organization. As I get started today, I'm going to spend a couple of minutes first to give a brief introduction of Lexmark and GPS organization, which is our shared services organization. This will give context on how we embarked upon this digital transformation initiative. I will then dive into the initiative itself. What is Enterprise Digital Twin? Uh, we call it EDT in short. And how do we relate it to process digitization? along with the key pillars of the strategy to implementation, okay? After that, I'll share our journey of EDT in terms of the timeline, challenges, and key factors that allowed us to resolve the challenges that, that we'll be talking about. <clears throat> I will then share outputs and use cases that have been implemented as a result of EDT that will give you a sneak peek of the analytics that we have um, implemented and we are working on to actually show us um, the value of all these processes and tasks that we have put in this database. And then I'll close with the unimagined vision, um, which, which is which are some big words, but it really implies innovation, creativity, and thinking outside the box to think about possibilities that may not have been previously considered. Okay. So first, to talk a little bit about Lexmark and GBS. To start with Lexmark's portfolio, at our core, we are an emerging company. We have more than 7 million printers and devices deployed with customers in more than 170 countries around the world. Of those devices, more than 1 million are under contract through what we call Lexmark Managed Print Services. Um, using Lexmark Global IoT System, which is a single worldwide software system, we manage printers and multifunction devices in more than 230,000 locations. And we also reach markets and customers that are not covered by our direct sales through our broad network of more than 6,500 partners. Now, what does this mean? What do these numbers really mean? This creates a set of activities from either front office, back office, or main office perspective that we have to support from the GBS or the shared services organization at Lexmark in some sort of form, right? We have to support these processes. And that is why we couldn't do this without a single global system and asset management processes. We can hold it together with sticks, but it wouldn't be efficient. 
This is where GBS evolution comes in place. GBS, as I mentioned earlier, is really an evolution of our shared services centers. It's a process-oriented organization supporting end-to-end -end processes and process governance and process enablement. This organization really supports multiple functional value streams like the order to cash, um, onboarding our customers and partners, invoicing them, uh, market to lead and lead sales operations and multiple uh, value streams and functional processes. One of the key things I wanted to highlight is in 2021, we got an alignment from GBS leadership perspective on where we wanted our organization to be at the maturity level. We wanted to move up the curve and be recognized as digital GBS organization. What that means is we wanted to shift from transaction-driven organization to value-driven organization. And it is important because that shift explains the focus we have on digital transformation initiatives in this organization, one of which includes digitizing the processes in GBS. So what is this initiative about? And what is Enterprise Digital Twin? A digital twin is a virtual model designed to accurately reflect a physical object. For GBS, the physical object is equal to our processes. The objective is to digitize from high level diagram down to task level in a connected environment. And this is where we have leveraged Inspire solutions, specifically Inspire Designer and UPMX integrated with ServiceNow. Uh, this is to create a central database of our processes. The key benefits, and they are highlighted here, they include end-to-end -end visibility of our processes across the organization, authoritative source of truth, and capability to identify re-engineering opportunities. These re-engineering opportunities can be in the form of simplification, automation, standardization, optimization, and a lot more, okay? We will be looking at some of those examples and outputs later in the session. So this is what is Enterprise Digital Twin. And the next is the strategy. What was our strategy at Lexmark to implement Digital Twin or process digitization? Okay. We have four key pillars for the strategy. Digitalize, analyze, realize, and evangelize as a service, evolve as a service. Okay. I'll go through each pillar briefly, and then we will look at how it applies to Lexmark's journey as we move through this 18-month journey on digital transformation. Digitize. So digitize refers to digitizing our processes down to task level. Creating and digitizing, it's, it's such a tough word to stay, say, and I still fumble every time I say it, but it's really creating a digitized model of our organization, of our processes down to task level. Right? It allows us to have a single authoritative source of truth for our processes in one database. And I cannot stress enough, you'll hear some words over and over again, uh, but the key to this is having a database for our tasks, for our processes, and for our data. The next pillar is analyze. What is analyze? It's truly analyzing our processes and tasks that have been put in our data database to deliver insights by connecting the processes um, that have been documented. We are able to aggregate the data and roll it up and visualize it, right? The third pillar is realize. So what we did with Analyze is we are able to see the data. We are able to get insights on it. We are able to um, identify opportunities by making it visual, right? And you'll see how we have done that using analytics. But Realize is now taking the next step 
and implementing the opportunities that were identified through the previous phase. That is where you really reap the benefits, right? You're, you're able to see the benefits uh, eventually to the individual teams, to the organization as a whole. And last but not the least is advocating EDT as a service. The idea for us here um, is we want to be able to expand to areas outside GBS to provide EDT as a service. Okay, so that was our strategy. I'll go through how, how we have used this uh, strategy in our 18 month transformation. In April, 2022, uh, we kicked off the EDT initiative in GBS. We were not starting from scratch. It had already worked, IT had already worked actually. Um, there were teams that had already worked on configuring Inspire with ServiceNow in the Lexmark environment. They had also created a few processes uh, working with different areas as a proof of concept before this move to the shared services organization. So what did we do in the first phase of kickoff? We worked with aligning with IT, uh, training on the tool, and identified over 50 designers from the GPS organization in different value streams and started documenting our processes. As I mentioned earlier, I am going to highlight challenges in each of these phases. Our biggest challenge was methodology consistency and using the tool to its highest potential. Yes, all the designers had taken the same training on the tool, but we did not have consistency in mapping the processes. We did not have a standard BPM and methodology, okay? So to address this, there were two key strategies that we implemented. One was establishing an online designer community on Yammer. Uh, and this could be, we use Yammer, but this could be any online platform. Uh, this allowed train, open training sessions and recorded training sessions, discussions um, between the designers, idea sharing. And eventually we found that we had the designers thinking the same way and aligning in the same methods, okay? And the other one was closely collaborating with Inspire. We wanted to share our vision on what we wanted to achieve out of this tool. Right, and out of this initiative. And that is where we were able to learn so much more working with Inspire to say, these are the things you could do and enhance what we were already doing in terms of mapping. By the end of year 2022, uh, we were able to get the first set or the first level of processes, especially the level two and level three processes across the GBS value streams. and to get an insight of how we could utilize the information in the database. So we had analytics, we were able to get some analytics out of what was documented. Um, again, that was not perfect, but we were able to get a glimpse of what, uh, what the output would look like. Um, we were not able to get 100% of the GBS processes down to the task level uh, by the end of that year, but we were able to see what, what can we do, what is completed, what we could measure digitization, okay? Our challenges, which most likely are challenges with for a lot of organizations was user adoption and acceptance. Change management is hard, right? Learning a new tool and doing something differently is always challenging. And our most effective approach in addressing this challenge was consistent communication on the vision and strategy. Along with, we had very strong leadership support. Right? We had the, the leads of every value stream in GBS, uh, talk to the benefit, communicate the vision on where we are headed. Okay. <clears throat> so past one year, uh, we are in the third phase of analyze. Uh, we were able to implement 100% of our processes down to task level for one of our areas, which is data governance area. So we are still not there. We are not implemented all processes down to task level, 100% in GPS. But we had picked an area 
which is the data governance team. And what the data governance team does is master data management for customers, partners, product and material in Lexmark. So this team is part of the digital transformation organization itself in GBS. And we were able to work with this team um, to 100% complete and digitize the processes down to the task level. As a part of this use case, we were able to identify re-engineering opportunities for standardization, simplification, and automation. And these honestly were quite significant, resulting in about 50% of OPEX reduction, okay? Thus bringing us to that second milestone, which was analyze, right? We had identified opportunities that can eventually be implemented to reap the benefits. Um, we had end-to-end -end connectivity to all data governance processes in a single database to identify the opportunities. However, there was one thing, the analyzing part was done manually. This was done manually by our lean experts. Right? And they had gone through about 250 task diagrams for data governance and identified these opportunities. It was quite tedious. Now, when we talk GBS currently, we have over 2000 task diagrams and we are still growing. So it is not sustainable to have someone do this analysis manually. To overcome this, um, we are working on identifying or working on automating opportunity identification. What that means is we are using or trying to figure out advanced analytics to be able to identify these opportunities more significantly. On the other side, um, we are in April. Well, yes, we are in April now, and we have already implemented re-engineering stories um, and examples or the opportunities that were identified last year for data governance. And you'll see some of those outputs. So while we are working on an automated solution to get these insights for other areas, we have already started implementing these uh, re-engineering stories. Okay. So that was our transformative journey of 18 months. And we realize we have just gotten started, right? As we, as we look at what lies ahead of us. But I will move into the actual output and the use case discussion, which will give you some, some view of what kind of analytics have we been able to successfully create? Um, what are some of the examples of the use case that I mentioned earlier, the data governance, in terms of simplification, standardization, and automation? So these are our current analytics on processes documented within, uh, within the tool, within Inspy. We have eight GBS value streams, and this is the analytics we have run. This is a screenshot from the analytics. Uh, 407 level three processes across GBS, over 2000 tasks. And these are increasing as the teams are continuously using this. 179 different actors, that means in some way or form. Uh, there are about 179 different roles identified that work at, in the, at, at the task level in the GBS organization. And 21 different system components. Now these system components include uh, Lexmark tools. Uh, they, it could be in-house tools or it could be SAP, uh, different modules of SAP and Oracle and D365, Microsoft D365. They also include email uh, and chats chat systems, right? So there's 21 different system components used. The next visualization is a sample of showing how long a process takes, a level three process takes, and how many tasks um, are within that level three process. So the process selected here um, is to activate product model. And it tells me it takes five minutes to do seven tasks. It seems pretty efficient. <clears throat> Another example of uh, using the time, the process time that we have here is uh, it's showing a clear output of the model. For example, the process selected takes about one hour, 45 minutes with the task of validating the price in SAP, clearly taking most of the time. So 
if I wanted to make to make this process more efficient, the first thing I'm going to look at is it's taking one hour, 45 minutes, but majority of the time, 96 minutes are for this one validation task. What is it and, and why is it taking this long? Right? And I'm going to share one more example, which is a different view. Um, it's showing the relation between the actors in a business area. Um, for example, like the one I have here is master data governance. And that is the process we have 100% digitized up till the task level. So I can tell there are currently 17 different roles participating in the process in some form. So if there are changes to any specific tool or process in future, we, we know who these impacted roles are. I just have to run the analytics in a way where I can select the process, the task, or a tool, and it will tell me, hey, these are the different roles impacted. And we can do our change impact assessment and training with those users. And these are just some form of visualizations, right? Once we have the data, we can, we can look at this um, in different ways, depending on what we want to achieve. So with that, I am going to jump into one of our examples identified as a re-engineering opportunity in the data governance area. This example is to drive standardization by convergence of systems used as inputs. There were different tools that the users could use to request managing the customer or partner in our MDM, the master data management system. The idea was to have a single tool and process for all users for this kind of request. So we found that there were different people using different ways, uh, different pro tools, different process uh, to request management of a partner or customer. And by management, it could be a setup, it could be update, or it could be decommission or delete, right? We identified this um, through, the, through the diagrams and have decided that we will only be using a single tool and process for all users. And as the benefits uh, are listed here, it allows us precision IT support. It allows maintaining of single training, efficient training for all users and all roles. And one of these tools was also sunsetting. So we were able to offset the cost of replacing it since we moved, switched all the users to the other tool. Next, I'll talk about simplification as an example of re-engineering opportunity. We identified in the customer creation process, there was a validation task that was done by both the requester and the role completing the request. So as we, as we completed the data governance, the DG here stands for data governance in the diagram, we found that in lead to contract organization, the same task was being done when they were requesting um, certain items, right? So the opportunity here was to remove the validation process from one of the teams. And it, it only needed to be done once. We don't need duplicate tasks, right? So the idea was remove duplicated tasks. And this resulted in quicker process completion time and more efficient resource utilization. So we have seen standardization and simplification. The last example, here is automation opportunities. There were several automation opportunities actually identified, but I, I tried to pick the ones that were quick wins and quite relatable to follow uh, for everyone. So we have implemented automation of email notifications where the users had to manually email the approvers or managers and send them reminders to complete their tasks. Using Power Automate uh, in Power Platform, the reminders are sent consistently based on specific conditions, resulting in reduced wait time, reduced process time, and quicker setup completion. Okay. So uh, we have, sorry, it started. I didn't want to start that yet. So we saw these opportunities where we identified that were identified manually by our lean experts, right? But I did mention that we are already starting to automate some of these through advanced analytics and give us some insights. So I'm going to take the last example um, where I, I mentioned automating of emails and how we have already implemented that uh, in, our, in our analytics to give us some insights. 
Okay, it's a one minute demo. I'll show you how we could have identified these opportunities that were done manually before uh, for email notifications. So it should be playing. So if you see what I have done is, uh, it's GBS, business architecture. We will be selecting digital transformation area and data to value because that is where our data governance processes lie. And I'm selecting master data governance and I'm going to select customer. So customer management is going to be part of the analysis we have done here for automation opportunities. <clears throat> and I'm going to be seeing the system completion. That is where we identify what tasks are manual versus not and go through the drill through of all the tasks. Here, um, I'm saying, give, show me all the manual tasks. <clears throat> Selecting task type. And what I have already done um, so that I don't have to select this one by one is I have already looked for all the tasks that say email in the name, right? So if you see, these are already pre-selected. And here it shows me, I currently have three tasks that are manual and we are sending manual emails for. Now that doesn't mean all of these could be automated, but we have something that we can share in this particular process, right? Ideally we would do that for data governance and more at a higher level, but I wanted to share um, something at a level three process of customer management, partner management, and one. So here I can already see there are three opportunities that can I can go and talk about, sorry. I can talk about with our stakeholders to say, hey, in data governance, you have in customer management, you have three opportunities. In partner management, you have so many. And that, that's a very quick way. Eventually we can do that overall for GBS and identify what, what are we looking at in terms of benefits. And this was just one example. We have done something similar for duplicate, identifying duplicate tasks with different actors and so on. Okay. So the last section of unlocking unimagined vision. And as I mentioned, it seems like they're really big words. Um, what the idea is, is we have, we are now able to see the power of what we have done in the past 18 months. Now that we have, we, we have gotten a glimpse of what can be done, we realize that we are just getting started. There is so much more we can do on the foundation that we have laid with process digitization. The possibilities are endless. And I'm not going to read through the entire list, but you see, we can come up with a headcount model since we have the process time. We could, we could build job descriptions uh, based on the ta tasks and the actors. Right? We could um, do change impact assessment. We had, uh, we had our uh, Oracle Siebel system being sunset. We, we could select that tool that is being used and identify every single role and every single business area that is impacted. And honestly, that was a miss uh, three or four years or five years back when we started this. Uh, there were roles that were impacted that were not identified. We should be able to do that now. So there's just so much we can do, right? The, there are endless possibilities um, and so many ideas to using the powerful database that we now have within Inspy and ServiceNow. Okay. So this, this is, our experience. I wanted to share our experience um, and the journey for each team, for each organization is different. But if you are on this journey or thinking of starting this journey, hopefully some of what I have shared can apply to your processes. That was fantastic. Thank you much, very much. We, we do. I know we're running a little short on time, but we did have a couple of questions, uh, including uh, one that came in early. So I just want to Read us off, and maybe we can take a couple of questions. And then, if we, uh, if anybody does have any final things, please put them in the Q and A section. Uh, but uh, the first question, just I uh, did get a question with regards to the difference between uh, process mining and, and task mining. If you could talk to that, and then just you know talk about the route that you guys went down and why. So, at a high level, process mining studies the event logs and system logs. Right? It, it studies the system logs to identify the processes and document the processes in the tool. Task mining is more execution, the clicks, 
um, the keystrokes and what is the user actually doing. So we decided to go through the route of task mining. And one of the key reasons is we have, as you saw, we have so many different systems. And some of these are in-house Lexmark tools. We also have systems, we also have processes and tasks that are not in the system. So opening an Excel file and doing a copy paste and um, downloading a report, right? Those, those things are not captured in the system and event logs. So that is why we have gone the task mining route. Thank you very much. That, that's very helpful. Um, did have another question that came in live during the event here, um, asking about what media and methods did you use to communicate with end users to help increase adoption? Uh, any thoughts there? Yes. Uh, well, a lot of it. So this is the approach we took. Uh, I don't know if that would work for everyone. We use an online community. So within the enterprise digital twin itself, we increased um, awareness and all our written communication would go through the online platform of Yammer, uh, where we had the designers and we had our different leads of the value streams. So any, depending on the announcement, if it is really training or um, enhancements on the tool, it would go out to the designers. But if we really needed to say, hey, we are moving this step, here is where we are, here is our next milestone, we would include the, the value stream leads, um, like the order to cash lead and um, order onboarding to resolution lead. When I joined the organization and started pushing for this initiative, my best approach for me was first start with the leader. We always approached the lead and had one-on-one -on -one discussion, shared what we had done, where we are going, and start with that level of curiosity. How can we help you, right? And that, that's always, that was always my take on it because that is how we were able to be successful. If the, if the leader can eventually spread the message to the organization, it helped, and we were able to get buy-in from that, from that area or that value stream much easily or much more easily than we would have directly approached end users. And okay. of course, then we started working with the end users and providing that level of support. Um, but the starting point was always the leader. And I think that's a great approach just, you know, from here. And you say, I love the word, how you say, you know, you know, you were out there and you were curious, you know, to kind of really, you know, understand what they needed. I think that's fantastic. So, um, yeah, I'll ask one more question, you know, just so we have, you know, and then we'll, we'll wrap up on this, um, a question around, you know, you know, why utilize, you know, service now, service now over some of the other dedicated tools that are out there? You know, why, why service now, you know, what, you know, was, was, what was the advantage of having everything there? You know, why, why go down that road? So honestly, some of these decisions were made way before I joined the team. Right? But one thing I do know, uh, ServiceNow has, uh, has been implemented. Uh, we have made a very, Lexmark itself has made a very heavy investment in ServiceNow and usage. So not just uh, operational teams, IT, um, and a lot of organizations outside or teams outside GBS work in ServiceNow for the end-to-end -end, uh, workflow management also. So by the time we were looking for process management, it just made sense that we would utilize an existing tool or system that, was, that we had already invested in and uh, had so much usage in already to then integrate uh, Inspy with ServiceNow. That makes sense. And then I, I did say we'll, we'll wrap on this question. One question came in at the last minute here. Uh, just about, um, did you capture the tasks for the digital twin directly into ServiceNow or did you, were there other templates that were then used and then I guess integrated in? Uh, we captured the tasks in the designer module for Inspy. And that is then in the, the tables and the information from the designer mo module is then integrated into ServiceNow tables. So designer is where we captured, the template of the designer is where we captured these. And by now, I say designer, it's one of the modules in Inspire. So. All right. Well, well Shari, I wanted I want to thank you very much for you know kind of helping us with this webinar today and, and sharing your experience. Uh, I, I think everybody got a lot out of it. I really appreciate it. It's uh, I love listening to our our customers and learning about and learning more myself about what you um, you know what everyone is doing. So thank you very very much for that. 
Uh, for those of you in the audience, uh, I uh, would let you know as well, for those listening live, um, Shari is also going to be speaking um, at the uh, ServiceNow Knowledge24 conference. So if you are there, uh, please uh, come by and, and visit with her if you have other questions. Um, Inspy will be there as well, and we'd love to see you. Uh, in fact, some of us will be spending a couple of weeks in Las Vegas, as we'll also be at the, Ga the Gartner Application Summit immediately afterwards as well, the following week. Uh, so please come by and see us. We'd love to answer questions about uh, kind of what we do and uh, share a little bit more about this example, as well as some of the other things that we do. But, but Shari, thank you very much uh, for, for participating, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in a couple of weeks. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate it. Um, and please... Uh, feel forward to reach out to me. I'm Sherry Seth on LinkedIn also. So I would love to connect. Thank you. And everyone have a good day.